Today we're going to go and look through our installation of a hybrid VPL. So it's going to go a little over run of the hoist way of it. Um, so if we walk in here first, first important thing is per code requirements, which is not sent out us by us by Atlas, is to be in your hoist way. You need a 110 light with an on and off switch and also a worker's outlet, so a GFCI outlet, um, the resettable one, to make sure that you comply to the code um, for your installation. Now what is sent out by us is we have two cutoffs. So this is our light cutoff. We also have our main disconnect switch, which is on the outside of our hoist wave. We can show you a little bit later um, to shut off the unit. And this is the lights of our cabin. So this is another light, which is independent of our elevator. Um, the other thing we have here is a pitch switch. So uh, it's, it's directly in our security line with our elevator. So if we hit this button, all the power cuts off and we are not able to use or operate the elevator. Um, once we come in, the AC power comes in to our chargers here. So the AC power is only used for these chargers actually in our unit. The whole entire unit is DC powered. So we can see that they're wired up here through our disconnect and then they go directly to each battery. So we have one charger per battery uh, to make sure we got a nice balanced charge. And then what we're gonna go do is we're gonna go through the uh, cabin upstairs so we can show you a little bit more of the adjustments in the switches in there. So now we're gonna be showing you the inside of the cabin of our hybrid VPL. So as we can see, we know it's a this is a zero degree unit, so we only have one side entry, same ex uh, entry exit. Um, this is our control wall. So the, basically the wall with the COP in it, the control operational panel, um, is always the one with the rails behind it. So what we wanna do is I'm gonna go through a little bit process of how to remove this wall. We're gonna look what's behind it. So we have our speed governor that's there, and we're gonna go and look through the adjustments of the switches we have as well. So our first step is to remove the COP. Um, the whole actually candle is gonna be done with a uh, Phillips head screwdriver. I have it on my impact gun. So it's the four bolts of each corner. Next step is to remove the wall, which we have two angles on each side, a remaining of six bolts. We're just going to remove them with the same Phillips head screwdriver. So once we remove the two angle irons on each side, uh, the panel is completely free and we're able to lift it up and actually slide the lower section towards us. So we lift up and we slowly slide it towards me. So since we removed the front wall, this is what we see. It's basically the inside of our hoist earlier. I unplugged my COP. Um, if you need to operate the unit without the front wall installed, you need the COP to be plugged in for the safeties in the cabin. Uh, so we have our brake switches, our slack cable switches, and our emergency stop. So they all need to be wired up for the elevator to be safe to move. So if it's not plugged in, the elevator is not going to work. So that's the first thing. The second thing we want to look at is our switches that we have to, for our landing switches. So the first switch that we're going to look at is the door zone switch. Um, so we have one door zone per landing. That is the switch that is fixed on the uni struck of the unit. And it activates on a four inch cam um, that follows and travels with the cabin. So with the cabin that goes up 
uh, and down, that's the four inch cam that activates that switch. And then we have the other switch that's underneath it, which is our landing switch, our stop switch. We call it LSE. Um, that switch is activated by the cam of the door zone. So once the door zone is center of its four inch cam, we need to make sure that that's when the landing switch activates to stop the unit at the right height. The door zone switch adjustment, the most important part is the intermediate levels. Since we go up and stop on a landing and go down to stop on a landing, if you're not center of that four inch cam, you may have a little bit of distance between the stops to get out of your landing. So just make sure that that door zone switch is center when it stops on the stop switch, like I said, the LSE switch, once that one activates, it stops. So once it's center and it stops on the right switch, you should be uh, dead center of your landing. So this is our unit speed governor. Um, what this is here for is to maintain the right speed of the elevator. So if it's ever there to free fall or to go faster down than it's supposed to, the speed governor will trip and actually engage this bar here to engage the brakes into the rails. And that completely locks the unit into place and stops it from going down. Um, once that is complete, so like I said, uh, you go through this trap here and it's attached to a switch. So even if this uh, cable were to break, the switch will fall down and get activate this switch to cut off the power of the elevator. The trap in the speed governor travels up and down with the cab so we can understand that it turns all the time throughout the travel and if it speeds up that's when it'll open up and engage the brakes for the unit. So we're going to go through a run through of the upper section of the hoist width of the hybrid VPL. So what we have up here is basically our motor and our gearbox. So it's basically it's a winding drum unit. So obviously we have our winding drum here with our cables um, that basically uh, spoil up to lift and to lower the elevator. Um, that is controlled by the motor and the big gearbox that we have there. We also have a little uh, switch that's above it. So you can see that uh, it moves up. There's a little tiny switch here. If ever the cables were to jump over and to double out or cross over, that'll get pushed up and stop the elevator right away. That's one of our safety switches. Um, the motor up here uh, basically has a big brake on it. Um, this brake is electrical brake. Um, so it's automatically disengaged and engaged when the power of the unit is given. Um, the way to test the brake is to actually just pull on it. And as I can see, my unit slowly starts to come down on it, release the brakes. So we can know that the brake is releasing. If uh, it is a brand new unit and a brand new gearbox, it's not going to go down as quite. You have to brake in the gearbox before. So pulling on the brake and just turning it with a wrench on the tip of the motor that's left to see if at least the motor is truly releasing the brake. Once you break in the gearbox, you'll be able to release the brake and the unit should come down uh, once it gets broken. All right, so right now we're gonna go inside the hoistway again. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit uh, about the rails and how to install them and what kind of sections they come into. So, Left and right section of the rails always come pre-assembled. As of now, the newer units, they come at eight foot sections with these crossbars that, that are always holding these together. So the way to actually install this is the, the panel, everything comes together. So your first section is actually like this. You're gonna set it down in the bottom of the hoistway. You can see it goes directly on the ground. This is a four inch uh, pit that we got. The standard pit is four inches. If you have a different pit, that measurement's gonna change, of course, but it's gonna be per custom for job for your installation. Um, the way that we need to make sure that this goes plump on the wall, you have your measurements to make sure you're centered with your beams and that your motor is center plump up top of your hoistway. Um, you can see here that we shimmed to make sure that the <coughs> uh, rails stay 100% plumb all the way down the hoistway. 
So we have we don't have any on this side. So we can see that the wall had a little deflection on the lower section here. So we shimmed it out to make sure that they were very 100% parallel. Uh, when we come to put the second section on top, all we have to do is mount it. So we have mounting pins, two sections right on top of each other. And then we're able to mount our uh, lag screws right as so inside of the rails. It is okay that they're not flush. The wheels go behind it and they do not touch. So you can kind of see that there's a marks where the rails go and that this section is clear. So the bolts have ample enough of space to not uh, be in the way of the rails and the wheels. So going back to the two uh, disconnects that we have on our unit, we have our main disconnect that's on the outside of the hoistway, and this is our light cutoff inside of the hoistway. Not to confuse with the light that's for the worker inside of the elevator shaft, it's independent. This is the lights that are inside of the elevator cab. Uh, when we shut off the main cutoff, it's important to always shut off this cutoff as well, because we don't want to drain the batteries. Once we shut off the power from the main cutoff, the lights in the cabin automatically turn on and with no charger the batteries will drain. It's always important to come in here and shut that off if we turn off the power of the unit. 